Power transformers perform the vital task of changing voltages from one level to another. They're essential for the efficient and economical transmission of power over long distances. In this program, we'll discuss generally accepted guidelines for working safely with this type of equipment. The principal hazards found in work with power transformers include explosion and fire as a result of transformer failure, energizing of the transformer case due to grounding system failure, shock from exposed bushings and conductors, backfeed from low voltage sources, work on the wrong equipment due to improper labeling, failure due to draining insulating materials from an energized transformer, failure due to changing tap position under load on an energized transformer, mechanical hazards from fans, pumps, and other auxiliary equipment, failure due to adding fluid to an energized transformer when fluids are at the coil and core level, and finally, failure due to using the wrong type of fluid or by using contaminated fluid. So as you can easily see, work with power transformers can be hazardous if proper safety precautions are not followed. The rating of a power transformer depends on its voltage and the load it handles, the way it's cooled, and its auxiliary equipment, tap changers and bushing arrangements. Some power transformers make minor changes in voltage by the use of tap changes. Depending on the application, they can be designed to change voltage for single phase or three phase operations. And all power transformers share a basic design. A laminated square core of steel, specially made for this application, is wound with a primary and a secondary of insulated wire. The windings may be on top of each other or on opposite sides of the core. The capacity of the transformer is determined by the amount of cooling and the size of the winding conductors. Copper is the most commonly used conductor, though some aluminum is also found. A typical three-phase transformer has six sets of conduction coils, as shown here. The voltage change is determined by the ratio of the number of turns on each side. In this example of a step-up transformer, the primary side of the transformer has 100 turns and is fed by a 120 volt AC power source. The secondary side has 1000 turns, a ratio of 1 to 10 for each phase. The voltage rating of the secondary side is 1200 volts. For a step-down transformer, the ratio would be reversed, that is, a 10 to 1 ratio. Current losses in the steel core and the conductor coils produce heat. Some type of cooling device must be incorporated into the design of the transformer to dissipate this heat. Commercial transformers are cooled by immersion in a liquid or by air cooling. Liquid-cooled power transformers use a variety of materials for cooling. Silicon-based liquids are one type of material used. The vast majority of liquid-cooled trans... Potential transformers reduce high voltages to a lower voltage, usually 120 volts, for metering, protective relaying, control, and other applications. A potential transformer provides a voltage precisely proportional to the circuit it is connected to. In this program, we'll discuss generally accepted guidelines for working safely with this type of equipment. There are three types of potential transformers, metering transformers, protective device transformers, and control power transformers. Metering transformers are used for very precise measurement of voltage. Electrical utilities depend on these metering transformers for determining power flow through a particular commercial circuit. Protective device transformers do not require the precision of metering transformers. A common application of protective device transformers is to provide a low voltage source for protective relay operation and metering where accuracy is not critical. Control power transformers are less expensive and physically larger than other types of potential transformers. They're used for lighting, battery charging, heating, control power, and other similar applications. 
In selecting a potential transformer, keep in mind the total load of the circuit in which it is to be used. Too heavy a load on the secondary side of a potential transformer can greatly reduce its accuracy and lead to total failure of the device. Back feed through potential transformers is one of the greatest sources of shock hazards in industrial and commercial power systems. Potential transformers are often part of a complex interlock and control system. The opportunity... Current transformers are a vital part of the electrical protective system in the plant. Current transformers reduce the current in the power circuit to a level that can be handled by protective relays and meters, thereby isolating them from the power circuit. In this program, we'll discuss generally accepted safe guidelines for work with this type of equipment. Hazardous situations associated with work on current transformers include failure to check the transformer before installation, the correct type and rating transformer must be used, and the secondary circuit must be complete before the transformer is energized. Opening the secondary circuit while the transformer is under load. This causes a very high voltage on the secondary side that can produce severe shock, arcing, and blast hazards. Under no circumstances should the secondary circuit of a current transformer be opened while the primary is carrying current. Current transformers are used in electrical power systems to step down current. A current transformer's primary purpose is to provide a proportional measurement of the quantity of current flowing in the circuit. The unit of current measurement is in amperes. It would be impractical and very dangerous to measure the full circuit load. Current transformers step down the current in precise... Power distribution systems provide efficient distribution of electrical power throughout industrial facilities. They also provide a safe means for reducing voltages and isolating large electrical circuits. In this program, we'll discuss generally accepted safe work practices for work on power distribution systems. Clearing the system before beginning any work is very important. If positive steps are not taken to clear the part of the system you're working on, then you must consider the work as being energized. To clear part of an electrical system where work is to be done, the following steps are required. First, review operating one-line diagrams and identify all power sources that are part of the system you're working on. Second, open circuit breakers and rack out if necessary. Open switches. Remove potential transformer fuses and take any other action needed to put a visible air gap between all power sources of the system you're going to work on. Third, use a high voltage sensing device to verify that the system in question is de-energized as well as the proper use of appropriate measuring equipment. And fourth, if at all possible, ground the system. The most frequent cause of injury when working on power distribution systems involves working on the...